The professional logger felling timber in the woods has two main concerns, safety and efficiency. Directional felling through proper notching and back cutting techniques is the key to both of these concerns. Directional felling means that the cutter is at all times in complete control of the timber he is cutting. It means that the feller and his crew are protected from the hazards of timber falling out of control. And it means an orderly felling pattern that allows faster, easier, and safer limbing and skidding. In this program, we will examine the three basic types of notch, the back cut and the hinge, and the notching and back cutting techniques that add up to safety and efficiency in directional felling. The first step in felling any tree is to assess the tree, the area, and the escape route. Factors to consider include the natural lean of the tree, any heavy branches on one side that could affect direction of fall, snow or ice loading, the wind, direction, and speed, branches that are bound in with the neighboring trees, other trees or ground obstacles to avoid hitting, and of course, the skidding pattern itself. A good work area with solid footing clear of underbrush, branches, and debris is needed. This means cutting small saplings low and flat to the ground to reduce tripping hazards and prevent damage to skidder tires. The escape route, the safest direction for the cutter to retreat, extends back and away from the tree at a 45 degree angle. It must be brushed out and ready for use when the tree starts its fall. There are basically three types of notch that will be discussed in this program. The conventional notch, the undercut or Humboldt notch, and the V-notch. Each of these notches is best suited for use under certain conditions, but all three work on precisely the same principle. Each notching system consists of three basic parts. The notch itself, cut in the exact direction of intended fall, the back cut or felling cut that allows the tree to fall and the hinge, the strip of uncut wood between the notch and the back cut that holds the tree in position so that it falls under control in the intended direction of fall. The function of the notch is to allow the tree to fall in the intended direction before binding on the stump. As the tree falls, the trunk and the stump fold together like a mitered joint. When they fold together, the hinge is broken and the tree continues to fall to the ground. The back cut, made directly opposite and one to two inches above the notch, severs enough of the remaining wood fibers to allow the tree to fall. The hinge, or the uncut holding wood between the notch and the back cut, holds the tree in position while it falls in the direction of the notch. The first step in the felling process, then, is to choose a target in the desired direction of fall. Where possible, the notch should be from the right side of the tree. If the left shoulder is placed against the tree and the body positioned behind the saw, the sighting lines on the saw can be aimed exactly at the selected target. Properly positioning the notch is very important. Even a fraction of an inch offline at the stump can mean that the top of the tree will miss the target by several feet. The first type of notch that we will look at is the conventional notch. It is the notch most commonly used and is the simplest to make. It should be made with the left hand on the corner of the forward handle of the saw so that the first cut is made sloping downwards at an angle of about 45 degrees. It should extend to a depth of about one-third of the tree's diameter. The depth of any notch should be about one-third of the diameter of the tree, but can vary from one-quarter to one-half, depending on the circumstances. The width of the notch should be as wide as it is deep, or 45 degrees, to ensure that the hinge wood doesn't break until the tree is committed to falling in the desired direction. If the notch is not properly positioned, the tree cannot be expected to fall where intended. Once this cut is made, the cutter can look down at it while making the second cut straight and level. Both cuts should then meet cleanly, and on completion of this second cut, the wedge of wood should come clear of the tree. The mouth of the opening will be roughly equal to its depth. Before leaving the notch, it should be examined to ensure that both cuts meet cleanly. The direction of the notch can also be verified by placing the bar of the saw into the notch and using the sighting lines to confirm 
that it is lined up with the target. The back cut is again made directly opposite the notch. It should be level and one to two inches above the notch. It severs enough of the remaining wood fibers to allow the tree to fall. Since the sloping cut of the notch is made on the trunk of the tree, the falling tree may tend to ride up on the stump and slide back towards the cutter. The back cut placed above the notch creates a ledge or a step to hold the butt and prevent it from sliding back. You should stop cutting the back cut when the tree begins to fall or the proper amount of hinge wood is left. In some cases, perfectly balanced trees may require a felling wedge.